So we're going to be recreating some iconic characters such as Blossom from the Powerpuff Girls using just simple shapes. We're not going to get too into the pen tool, we're simply going to be using uh, ellipses and rectangles mostly to construct this character. And arranging things to the front and back and using simple offsets which allow us to expand the shape uh, by a particular amount or percentage. So I'm going to start a new document selecting up at the top of Illustrator File and New, selecting 1920 by 1080 and I can just call it whatever I wish. The orientation is set to landscape. 1920 by 1080 is the traditional full screen uh, HD size. So I'll just call this Blossom Illustration and press create. So what I typically do is I'll take what is the reference which I've provided to you and you can just drag and drop it onto the artboard. I already have mine on my previous artboard, so I'm just going to copy and paste. You can find other references on the internet and simply drag them from the browser directly onto the document itself. So I'm going to move this blossom to the side right here just using my V selection tool. V is the shortcut on the keyboard and dragging it to the left. In the layers panel, I typically will call the layer reference so you can double click on layer one type in reference and hit enter to commit the change if i want to duplicate my reference i can there are a couple ways of doing this one you can select edit edit and copy and then edit edit and paste and that will create a duplicate. Alternatively, you can select the original, hold down Option on your keyboard or Alt if you are on a PC versus a Mac, and then just drag out a copy while holding down Option or Alt the entire time. So either method is perfectly acceptable. You can lock a reference layer by selecting the space next to the eye in the Layers panel. And how you access your layers panel is if you go to window and then scroll down to layers and ensure that is checked on. However, it's usually docked on that sidebar. So I'm going to lock it and then create a new layer, which is the plus icon with the uh, square around it. So this will be the layer that I draw on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ellipse mode, which is L for uh, laugh, and press that on my keyboard. You can also find it under your rectangle tool on the side of your toolbar. If you don't see your toolbar on the side, you can go to window and then to toolbars, and you can choose either advanced or basic. For now, since we're just starting, we can choose basic. So I'm going to create out a circle for the uh, inner white pupil area. So I just held down shift while I create the ellipse. So I'm deleting that to show you one more time. If I don't hold down shift, the proportions don't stay uh, the same. So if I want it even symmetrical proportions, meaning the width and height are the exact same, I hold down shift. So if I want to create the ellipse here, I just uh, hold down shift to create out the size. And to get it to the white color, I can press I on my keyboard and I drop to the white. So because we are creating duplicates as we created the duplicate for the reference, I can simply edit copy and then edit paste, which is command C, C as in cut to copy and command V, V as in vector to paste. So that's one option. The alternative is I can use that option um, key if I'm on a Mac and drag out or alt key if I'm on a PC to drag out. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out a duplicate that goes on the other side. 
Thereafter, I can create another ellipse using my eyedropper tool. So I'm going to eyedrop to the black, pressing I on my keyboard and then clicking to the black area. I can then press L on my keyboard or go over to my toolbar, find where that ellipse tool is, hold down shift and draw out an additional circle. I can use my selection tool to place it approximately where the eye is and you'll notice that if I hold down shift while hovering over the corner widget, I can scale it up to get it exact. The problem is now the black ellipse is covering the white ellipse. So I can select object, arrange, and send to back. So now I have my white ellipse and my black ellipse. To duplicate it again, I can either select edit copy, command C, and then edit paste command B to create a duplicate, or I can hold down option on a Mac, alt if I'm on a PC, and drag out to drag out the duplicate. To zoom in and out as I'm working on this, because I'll notice that that makes this whole process easier, that is command plus to zoom in, control plus if you're on a PC, and command minus to zoom out if you're on a Mac, control minus if you're on a PC. Down at the bottom, you'll notice that there is the zoom level right here, which you can put in manual values for the scale percentage. And then for the rotation, you can set that to 0% if ever your uh, document view becomes slanted or skewed. So I'm going to create another ellipse out for the pink of the eye, pressing I on my keyboard, or just selecting the eyedropper icon and then clicking. I'm going to press L on my keyboard, L as in uh, Larry, and I'm going to again hold down shift and create an additional ellipse for the pink of the eye. I can use my selection tool to drag it into place and I can hold down shift while hovering over the corner to adjust the scale to be exact. So again, I want to select Object, Arrange, and Send to Back, which if you want shortcuts, that is Command, Shift, Left Bracket on a Mac, Control, Shift, Left Bracket on a PC, or you can just Object, Arrange, Send to Back. Again, I'm going to duplicate this out, so holding down Option, I'm going to drag out a duplicate or again, I can do edit, copy, edit, paste, and then just use my selection tool to drag it over. So now we have the eyes. You can always check to see what portions you've done against the reference by toggling the visibility of the reference layer. So I can just click the visibility icon and that will show what portion is vectored thus far. The next thing I'm going to do is the I white of the eye, so I'm going to press I on my keyboard, click to the white, and I'm going to press L on my keyboard to create the ellipse for the back of the eyes. So again, I can use my selection tool, which is shortcut V as in a violin, to make sure that the shape coincides with the reference as best as possible. And I can again do object, arrange, send to back. I can select option or alt to drag out a duplicate and bring it over. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to add a stroke. And so you can set the stroke to black by um, doing that over in the toolbar. Right now we've just been working on fills. However, if you select the square with the center missing behind it that has a strike through, I can double click on that and move the color over to the lower left hand side. I'm just going to select it to black and press OK. 
and I can go over to properties, which is the panel under window. I scroll down to where properties is and I can make sure that that is checked and visible and that will pull that up. Hopefully it's already docked on your right hand side. I can increase the stroke size by selecting upward with my ellipse selected so it knows what I'm trying to scale in terms of stroke. So I increase it to about maybe like five or six and I can again select the other ellipse which does not currently have a stroke and again I can select the stroke which is located behind the film double click and drag the slider down to the black area. This is on HSB mode, which is a color mode. You can toggle between RGB and HSB just by clicking the little dot selector and then pressing OK. Right now it still defaulted it to white, so I can just double click again, drag the slider over to the black uh, lower left hand corner and press OK. And then again, I can increase the stroke size by setting it to six, pressing the up arrow, or you can manually type in a value. At any point you want to get rid of a stroke, let's say we had a stroke on the pink that we didn't care for. There is three options underneath uh, for the stroke, which is a solid color fill a gradient fill for the stroke, and none, which is shortcut uh, the backslash. So I can press that with the stroke mode in front. If, however, though, the fill mode was in front and I pressed the none option, it would get rid of the color. So if you've done that, you can press Command Z or do edit and undo, and that will undo your last action. So you can go through and just make sure only the shapes that are supposed to have strokes have a stroke. I'm going to now do the uh, little mouth shape so I can use M on my keyboard, which is the shortcut for the rectangle tool option. So before I do M, I want to set it to the proper color. So I'm going to double click on my fill color, set the slider to black and press OK. And I'm going to toggle the fill and the stroke, just pressing the little arrow option, which swaps fill and stroke. Shift and X is the shortcut. So now pressing M on my keyboard, I can make a square the size of the mouth reference. I can increase the stroke size to, let's say, six, just to keep all of the strokes even. And I can use my direct selection tool, which is shortcut A. So my regular selection tool allows me to move any of my uh, my objects on my artboard versus my direct selection tool allows me to edit the points of the object. So you'll notice that there are these two little red and white dots on the inside of my shape when using the direct selection tool. I can select one of them, hold down shift, and click the other point to curve or bevel it inward. So you can see that resembles the mouth shape a little bit more. What I can do as well is press C on my keyboard or grab the scissor tool, which is located underneath the eraser tool, and I can select a cut right on the left side and the right side where uh, the mouth shape ends. I can then use the regular selection tool, now that I'm not editing specific points, to grab the top part of the shape that I cut off and hit delete on my keyboard. So now what I can do is I want to create like the soft little rounding caps to the line 
that coincide with the soft shapes of our character. So if I go over to properties, you'll notice where we were adjusting stroke, it has a little dotted underline underneath it. I can press stroke and select round cap and round corner to make the mouth match a little bit more. The next thing I'm going to do is create the ellipse for the overall uh, shape of the face. So I'm going to press I on my keyboard to eye drop to the proper color. You want to make sure that the fill is in front when you do it. Otherwise, it's eye dropping to the stroke. So you want to make sure that the fill is toggled in front. I'm going to again press L on my keyboard or you can click and hold underneath the rectangle to grab that ellipse. This time we're not going to be holding down shift because it is more of an oval than a symmetric circle. So I'm going to create the oval so that it roughly approximates the interior shape of the face. And then I'm going to use my selection tool, shortcut V, to position it to align with the inside. You can use your arrow keys to gently nudge the shape up or down. I can then hover over the edge of the shape and raise it so that way the top matches exactly and then stretch it a little bit more so the bottom and sides match. So I'm just going from corner to corner to adjust the shape. If you for whatever reason don't see the bounding box here, under view you want to make sure that uh, it says hide bounding box rather than show bounding box in case you don't see the uh, corner where you can adjust the scale. Again, this is blocking our previous artwork, so we need to object, arrange, and send to back. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about the hair. We'll do that one step at a time. But we want to get that nice outside stroke that she has. So there's a couple ways to do this. One is to create a stroke with black. And again, for some reason, it's defaulting it to white, so just double click and drag it down to the black and then press OK. And you can select stroke and set the stroke to outside right here. And again, set it to round cap. And then you can just increase the stroke size until the stroke size matches the thickness of the reference. So if I drag this over to the side, you'll see it's about as thick either way. Alternatively, let's say we didn't put a stroke of 15. So let's just, I'm gonna put that to none to pretend we didn't do that. I can take my shape, which is the filled ellipse right here and I can go to object path offset path and I can offset it to the same value which is 15 and press OK and then I can just simply eye drop to black. So the only difference now between those two methods is this treats the offset which creates the illusion of a stroke as a separate object or you can do it where it's all one object, meaning I just added a stroke of 15 in the properties panel and I set the stroke to outside or in the caps to round. So either way, perfectly um, fine to do it either way. I'm going to now create the bow of the character. So I'm going to press I on my keyboard or select the eyedropper tool, click to the red, and then again select the ellipse. I'm going to start at the top corner of the bow and drag downward until it matches the approximate width of my uh, bow reference. I'm going to press V on my keyboard or select the selection tool go over to the corner and rotate so that it matches the angle of the bow. 
Then I'm going to take my, uh, sorry, I'm just making sure it matches the interior shape as best as possible. So you can zoom in and make sure it snaps to the inside. And I can take my direct selection tool, shortcut A as an apple on my computer. I can grab the point on the end and then drag it upward. So that way it matches the uh, point of the bow. I can then take the handle and move that inward and take the other handle and move that inward. so that the shape comes more to a taper. If need be, I can always grab one of these other uh, side points and round that out a little bit more as well, just taking the handle and pulling it upward. However, you should be fine just by bringing these two handle points closer towards the center. So again, what I can do is I can go to my stroke. I can set the stroke to the amount of 15 to keep it consistent. And then I'll select the word stroke and then set it to the outside and then set it to round cap. Just showing you what it looked like. So again, I'm going to do object arrange send to back, so that way it's not covering the artwork. So what I can do is duplicate this to get the perfect reflection for the opposite side of the bow, holding down Option or Alt and dragging out, or you can simply edit copy or Command C and edit paste Command V. That'll be Control C and Control V if you are on a PC. So I will drag it to the approximate location and under properties, there is a reflect option where you can flip it across the vertical axis. So you can select that and that will flip it. I can then go to object arrange send to back or command shift left bracket if you are on a Mac, control shift, left bracket if you're on a PC. I'm now going to create the rectangle, which is um, shortcut M to create the rectangle that's gonna grow, go across the bottom right here. And I'm just making sure that the points align with where it meets the edge of the bow. I'm not worrying about the curve yet. What I can then do is add one additional anchor point to make the shape a little bit more complex to get that nice curve around the top. So if I press plus on my keyboard or the add sign, I can then select the topmost point to create a point in between the two edges. I can then use my direct selection tool take the point, drag it up, and then once I do, you'll notice that there's the little circle bevel option and I can drag it inward to create that curve. I can then select the object and then select arrange and select send to back to send the shape to the back and I can move it into places needed. Again, we can go to Layers, turn off the reference to see the progress of our character. So next we have the body and the hair. So I'm going to eye drop to the hair, pressing I on my keyboard, selecting the orange of the hair. I'm gonna select L on my keyboard as in lobster, and I'm going to Start by clicking and dragging a point from the edge of the hair to the opposite edge of the hair and then dragging downward so that way it matches the bottom edge of the hair. 
I can use V, which is the selection tool, to drag upward so that the middle point of the circle lines up with the middle point or with the like edge of the hair. And then I'll select the bottom edge of the uh, uh, bounding box and just drag down so it aligns with the bottom edge of the hair curve. So I want this to cut off sharply. So I'm going to select a rectangle, shortcut M as in math, or I can select and hold on the ellipse tool and then grab the rectangular tool. I'm going to draw out an ellipse where the hair cuts off. So you can create more complex shapes out of simple shapes by using the pathfinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift select both shapes. So I have one shape already selected. I'm gonna hold down shift and click the other shape. I'm gonna to go to Pathfinder, which is under Window and Pathfinder. You can also find a shortcut for it under Properties, which is the panel we've been using. And you can see right here over Pathfinder, the second option is the minus front. So that creates makes it a little bit more complex of a shape where we have uh, the kind of semicircle or arc at the bottom of her hair where her hair flares or waves out. However, before I do that, there might be some minor adjusting I wanna do just to make sure that the hair matches a little bit better. So I'm just gonna stretch it as needed so that way the circle matches the reference a little bit more. You can also use your direct selection tool if need be to drag any of the points out if you wish. This is just me being a little picky at this point. So again, you want to make sure that the uh, the square is on top because it's subtracting whatever is the top object. So to do this, you can do object arrange bring to front in case you created it initially um, and created the circle second. So you just want to make sure this is on top Remember, you're shift selecting both. I'm going to Pathfinder window, Pathfinder, or use the shortcut over here and select the minus front option of the shape modes. And if need be, you can use your selection tool just to adjust the points inward just so it matches the hair as best as possible. The next step is we are going to press M on our keyboard, M as in money, and we are going to draw a square that meets the innermost edge of both of the orange of her hair, like, and it comes slightly past her shoulders. I'm going to set the plus icon, which is the add anchor point tool, and you'll see that right in the center of either side of the square, I can create a, an additional point on either side. So let me do that one more time just so you can see it. Press the plus icon. You'll see the pen icon with the plus icon next to it. I'm gonna go to the edge of the square on the left side and hit um, and just click right there. And that creates an additional point. I can then use my direct selection tool, which is shortcut A, drag the point to the left, take right here, which is um, the lower right hand point, drag to the opposite end. So that way we get this more complex shape. I can then select the point I just created, shift select the other point I just created, grab the little circle uh, as a handle and drag outward to create that like bell shape. What I can then do is take the two orange shapes I created, 
shift select them so that I have both of them selected and I can go again to my pathfinder which is window pathfinder or the shortcut under properties and select the unite option under shape modes which is the first option and that combines it into a singular shape what I can then do is go to stroke set the stroke to 15 again set the stroke selecting the name setting it to outer and this time because it has a sharp edge on the hair I don't actually need to round cap it I'm going to move the hair to the side for now because we're going to work on the body. So I'm going to uh, eye drop to the pink of the outfit, which is also the same pink for the eye, pressing I on my keyboard and just clicking, pressing M on my keyboard for the rectangle and drawing out a rectangle that covers the basic shape of her outfit. And I can use my selection tool to make sure it lines up as best as possible. So we're lining it up with the innermost top edge because the bottom is wider than the top because it's a dress. So I'm going to press A as in apple, click on the lower right hand uh, corner and drag it out so that way it matches the little flare of the dress. Select the lower left hand corner with that same selection tool and drag out. So we have the dress shape now. You'll notice though that there is a stripe going across the middle. So I'm gonna press I on my keyboard and I drop to the black, or you can just double click and drag your slider to the black. Either way, and using my rectangle tool, I'm going to draw a rectangle across where the little band is of her dress. And I'm gonna use my V selection tool to bring the pink of the dress back into place. If I select the band, I'm going to select edit and copy and then hit delete on my keyboard because I've copied it. I can then select the dress itself, which is the pink, and underneath my fill and stroke, uh, I have three drawing mode options. The third drawing mode option, which is draw inside, um, will allow me to paste the uh, uh, the belt, so to say, on the inside of the dress. You can also toggle between drawing modes by pressing Shift and D, and it will allow you to circle through till you have the drawing mode that has uh, the square on the inside of the circle. Or you can just click it. That works as well. I'm going to select edit and paste in place, which will paste it exactly where you originally copied it. Okay. So we're going to switch back to the drawing mode normal, which you can just do shift and D again, or you can just select back to drawing mode normal. Okay. So we're going to create one more, um, the outer stroke for the dress. So if I add a stroke to the object right now, you'll notice it adds a stroke both to the belt on the inside and to the shape on the outside, when in reality, I only want the stroke applied to the shape on the outside. So there's a couple things we can do here. One is I can take this object copy and paste it to create a duplicate, or I can option drag out to create the duplicate either way. And I can select release mask, which will take the rectangle belt outside of the dress and I can delete it. Now what I can do is I can take the uh, dress and I can either A, add the stroke by going to 15, setting the stroke to the outside, and then object arrange send to back. Alternatively, I'm just going to command Z to undo that to show you the alternative method. I can select object path offset path. The 
uh, set the offset to 15 and press OK. And then just eye drop to the black. And then I can shift select both of these objects and do object arrange then to back. So either way, both work. Um, what I'll probably do for my example is just send it to the back, add the stroke size, set the stroke to the outside, as we said, and then set the round cap for both. One thing we're going to want to do is take the dress in its entirety. So I just, uh, using my selection tool, create a selection box by just clicking and dragging to select this whole area. I can do object, arrange, send to back to move the dress behind the head of the character. So I need to make the arms and legs now. So I'm going to press I on my keyboard, I drop to the arm. Again, I'm going to use the ellipse, so pressing L on my keyboard and drawing out the rough shape for the uh, arm, making sure it's approximately the same height. I'm going to take my selection tool, shortcut V, and rotate it a little bit and move it into place. And her arms are actually not perfectly, are not a perfect ellipse. So there's a couple options of what we can do here. We can either make the arms using a rectangle or make the arms using an ellipse, which either are perfectly uh, fine either way. So if I'm using it making the ellipse, I'm going to use the plus icon on my keyboard, click the side right here, and then click the side on the opposite edge right here. And then I simply will use my direct selection tool to grab the point I just made and drag it up so that way we square off the top a little bit more. I can then take the last point and move it out a little bit more. Then what we'll do is we'll take this arm, select object, arrange, send to back, so it's behind the dress. And then I can select uh, the stroke, set it to 15, set the stroke edge to the outside. You don't really need a round cap it since it's a round object, and that works fine. Another way to do it is if I eye dropped to the arm, for example, used the rectangle tool, which is shortcut M, and created a rectangle in about the approximate height and shape of the arm. I could rotate it using my selection tool. And I would use the plus icon to add an additional point at the edge. So this is if we were using a square versus an ellipse to make the arm. I'll use the direct selection tool to drag that point downward. And I can use the direct selection tool right here to shift select both of these outside points and drag that upward. I can shift select the last point and then just round the whole thing out a little bit, but I might decide to add two more points just to make it extra tapered like um, her actual arm. So if I use the plus icon one more time, I can add two more points take these two points outward, and I can shift select each of these points at the bottom and then round it out that way. You can always shift select the points again and just round it out a little bit more. Really, there's no right or wrong way. You can always also just do the original method with the um, ellipse and then just hold down option, drag out, and then hold or go to properties and select the flip horizontally to create the arm using just the same original method. So really there are not really too many ways you can go wrong here, as long as you're doing things symmetrically and following the reference. I'm gonna press I on my keyboard to eye drop to the white, and I'm going to create the 
little stockings. I can use my uh, selection tool shortcut V, hold down option, and notice when you're holding down option, if you also hold down shift when dragging out, that keeps it exactly in line. Otherwise, you're kind of just eyeballing uh, what is the right height. You can also use under properties the align tool to align um, things either horizontally or vertically if you need to match things up. But that is a little advanced and not necessarily super needed for this exercise or demo. Um, I'm going to use the... So there's really two options of what we could do for creating the little rounded part of our square down here. One is I can press M on my keyboard, create out the little rectangle so it matches the width and height. I can then use my selection tool, shift select the bottom two ellipses on the inside of the, um, the rectangle and just bevel it. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. The alternative method is you can use the ellipse tool, draw out the shape so it matches the bottom curve, and then use the method we did earlier where we grab an, a rectangle, draw it over, use the selection tool, shift select both objects, and then use that minus front mode in the pathfinder. Either way, very similar results. But remember, if you choose to use that first method, I would just suggest holding down option and duplicating whatever you do for the first one for the second one so that it looks symmetric. Last couple steps, I'm going to eye drop to the black of the stocking or the shoes. I'm going to use the rectangle tool shortcut M and I'm going to create a rectangle over where the shoe should be. I'm going to use the direct selection tool, shortcut A, grabbing the bottom two points, shift selecting them, and then beveling out the edge. Then I'm going to do object, arrange, and send to back. I can hold down option and drag out a duplicate for the second stocking and use my left and right arrow keys to move it or just simply drag it using the selection tool. Or I can always just do copy and paste it to create the duplicate, either way. So we're almost done. Um, we can take the hair, drag it into place, select object, arrange, send to back so it's in the backmost area. And we're just missing the little um, points on the hair that are the like indents or a separation of the hair. So I'm going to eye drop to the black again. And this time we can, there's really a couple, many ways to do this. Um, if we're going entirely without our pen tool, we could just create a rectangle here that approximates the width of the triangle, zoom in and add a plus icon to the, and click between the, uh, in the center of the top of the rectangle, and then use the minus uh, button on your keyboard to click these two points on the edge to create that like triangular taper. Alternatively, if you wanted to try out the pen tool, you can press P on your keyboard, make sure only the black um, of the fill is applied, not to the stroke, and you can just click three times to create that pen shape. So either way, uh, for the original version that we used, we're gonna need to rotate it so that way it matches the angle of the hair separation. And I'm going to just line it up over with the reference over here. I'm going to hold down option to create out the duplicate. And I'm going to use the uh, flip horizontally under the properties panel to make sure I get it on the opposite side. 
Lastly, let's tackle the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an ellipse using shortcut L as in lobster. And I'm going to draw out the approximate ellipse shape for the under portion of the hair. Okay. I'm then going to use an, an, an additional ellipse right here. I'm going to hold down shift and create an, uh, an additional ellipse that matches the width of the base of the triangular separation of the hair. Then I can go to my direct selection tool, click the topmost point, and remember direct selection tool is shortcut A as in apple, and drag upward. I can then take the handle and pull that in towards the center and then take the other handle and pull it in towards the center. So it creates that like teardrop part of her bangs. I'm gonna do more or less the same for the opposite side. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool. I'm gonna to hold down shift to create the base. I'm gonna use my direct selection tool, shortcut A, grab the topmost point and line it up. Then I can take the second most point and drag it here and then adjust the hang handles to match the curve. So that shape is a little bit more complicated for beginning with a digital illustration. The other option is you can press, let's see, If you, if you feel comfortable with the pen tool, you could select a P on your keyboard for the pen tool, click, click and drag on the center area right here, click on the edge, click and drag on the opposite center area to create the curve and drag out, and then bring it back to the beginning. So that's an additional way of doing it. Either way, you will have to play with the handles a little bit for that bang sec separation. So once you've created those, you can shift select these three shapes. Shift select the uh, black portion right here, which is the black ellipse at the bottom, and use the Pathfinder Unite Mode, first option of the shape modes, to unite them together. The last step is I'm going to eye drop to the orange of the hair and I'm going to use the ellipse tool shortcut L to draw out the rough hair interior shape which should cover more or less the face shape. If I select the black portion right here you can select object arrange bring to front to bring the hair part to the front. You can then press A on my keyboard as an apple to grab the bottommost anchor point and just drag it down. And then we're going to use that minus front option one more time here. So I'm going to shift select the base orange of the hair, shift select the black of the face, and then select the minus front to create that uh, hair part. If you're particular about getting the hair exact, you can press A on your keyboard and bring some of these points down to match the hair reference a little bit better since her hair isn't um, perfectly an ellipse cut out at the bottom. But that's up to personal preference if you want to get that exact. So I'm going to take the hair, move it over to our original uh, vector over here, add the stroke. So I can set the stroke to six and we have our full vector. So if we turn off our reference, you'll see we have our fully editable uh, character and you can 
go back at any point. You can change colors, which is really exciting. Make it more your own. Um, and yeah, really have fun with it. So uh, hope that helped. And you can email me if you have any questions.